What's up friends, fellow card collectors, Card Obvious here, coming at you from a little bit different angle here. Still had the hands. Um, but yeah, so I am doing a uh, end of the year binder video to show you what my binders look like at the end of 2019. And hopefully uh, if I'm still in this game at the end of next year, you'll see what my binders look like at the end of next year. So I'm going to split this up into four videos uh, because I got... Uh, four binders to show so I'm gonna show one binder a day and uh, just let me know what you think and the funny thing is is I got back into collecting around April and I had one binder of cards well I had two binders I had a baseball binder and I had a football binder and they're not the biggest binders so my collection was very very small um, back in April when I got back into into collecting but now I've expanded into uh, four separate binders now they're not totally slap full a couple of them are full so uh so maybe by next year <laughs> this will be a a week-long thing maybe even more to show off more binders but i'm just going to start going through all my binders and uh these are all the hall of fame collection i also have a few cards that aren't in binders you know like relics and stuff like that i'll show those off as well um but yeah let's just get into it and uh take a look at my end of year 2019 binders so we're gonna go through I got these organized by year so I my vintage is lacking a lot mainly because you know getting into vintage and all that it's it, it get pretty pricey and especially like a lot of stuff I don't like uh, buying vintage on eBay especially in the raw form just because I don't trust it there's so many counterfeits and stuff out there not to say that you can't pick up vintage on eBay you know raw for a good price it's just that i don't trust it so and i'm not like a graded card collector so i don't buy graded vintage which is even more expensive <laughs> i should say but let me quit rambling and, and just get into this uh so starting off is the oldest card that i have right now for hall of famers and it is eddie matthews 1964 and that is by far the oldest card i got now and i know that's not like the most impressive thing um, but like I said, I just got back into collecting back in April and I really, you know, didn't go gung ho on trying to, uh, get older vintage. I really mainly paid attention to modern staying within a, uh, you know, a limited budget, not trying to spend too much on cards. So yeah, so I got this Eddie Matthews 1964 and then jumping all the way to 1968, got another Eddie Matthews. And then jumping up to 1969, only got one 69 card, and it's this Deckle Edge uh, Bob Gibson. Got this for $2. Um, it's not in the greatest condition, but, you know, it's a 69 Bob Gibson Deckle Edge. And then we get to 70. We got three Hall of Famers here. Actually, there's four Hall of Famers on this one card here. Uh, but this is the 1970 set. This may look familiar because you've seen a lot of this design this year with Heritage. And then we move on to 71. 1971, only two cards from the 71 set. Now these aren't in the greatest condition either, but I'm not a big stickler for condition. Um, Al K. Line and Earl Weaver, two Hall of Famers. And super excited about Heritage next year because I absolutely adore this design. Big fan of black ported cards. All right, 1972. Only two cards from 1972. Got Billy Williams in action, and got the ERA leaders cards with a uh, Vita Blue, Wilbur Wood, and Jim Palmer, the only Hall of Famer that's on that card. All right, missing 73s, but we do have 74s. Fergie Jenkins, K Line, and Sparky Anderson. So those are my three 74s. 75s, I have a few more 75s. I've got five 75s. Uh, you got Killer Brew McCovey, so two Hall of Famers there. You got Johnny Bench, Tom Seaver, another Willie McCovey, and Joe Torrey. 76 only features two cards. Um, this is actually an SP or SSPC card. It's not a top, so it's a SSPC Willie Mays Herb Score, and then a Lou Brock. It's number 10. So for 77, also only two cards. 
Nolan Ryan. It's probably one of the <laughs> better cards you can get out of any set from the 70s. Nolan Ryan and uh, Don Sutton. It's only two cards from 77. 78, I got a few more cards, mainly because uh, I've been buying a few of these uh, 78 packs from back in the game collecting, and they each feature a Hall of Famer, so I managed to pick up more Hall of Famers out of 78. Lou Brock McCovey, Brooks Robinson, Tommy Lasorda, Reggie, Earl Weaver, Bruce Suter down here, Bob Lemon, Sparky Anderson, and Rod Carew. Right there. Alright, moving on to 79. Only four 79s. You got um, this is the TCMA set. Uh, 1950 set, I believe it's called. Early win. Willie Starge, old Tom Seaver. Reggie Jackson, 1979. Okay, so now we're into the 80s. Now this is where the binders kind of really pick up. Um, as you can see, all this was from, what, 64 to 79. So that's 15 years of cards there and just those few pages that shows how much I lack in pre-80s vintage. But a lot more cards follow this. When I say a lot more, I mean that's relative because... I know a lot of you out there have boxes and boxes and boxes full of cards. Russo said he had 800 million cards. I'm jokingly say that. <laughs> Love me some Uncle Russo. All right. So what you see here is mainly the Burger King uh, pitch hit and run set. These are all the Hall of Famers from that set. Uh, Carlton, Raleigh Fingers, Necro, Palmer, Ryan, Seaver, Sutter, Brett, and Carew. And then that continues on this page with Jackson, Rice, Rose, Winfield, and Morgan. And then you move into the 80s tops. Um, Pete Rose, Perez, Schmidt, Gaylord Perry, and Rod Carew. This last one here is a Pacific Legends. Uh, it's also called... It says something else on the back. Oh yeah, Kramer Sports Promotion. So... Uh, you may hear this called the Kramer set, but in Beckett it's listed as Pacific Legends, which they released over three years. You got a Willie Mays there. Alright, moving into 81, we got Donruss here. So you see Donruss coming onto the scene. One thing I love about having binders and going through and looking at them like this is... You get to see history of baseball and i think that's one of the things that draws me to baseball cards in the first place is the history of the game like i love the ken burns documentary about baseball and uh i just i love the history of baseball and, and how it moves along and it's not just the game but it's like it represents the era that it is happening in so you know you get to see the history and especially like focusing on these hall of famers is you get to see like the as players exit get older and exit um, become veterans and like you know veterans that had their heyday already and are just you know they're in the league that they, they might still be playing very well but you know maybe they're falling off a little bit um, but here you get to see the introduction of Don Russ 1981 Don Russ uh, Don Russ came into the game also Fleer down here so it was no longer tops itself it was now these other companies now coming in to produce cards which, you know, set up the Junko X era for, you know, those of us that are my age. So anyways, you got, you know, Rod Carew, Bench, Jazz. So you got three veterans here that, you know, have already put together their Hall of Fame resumes and, and are heading towards the ends of their careers. But then you got, you know, a young cat, Ricky Henderson, second year. Nobody expected him. Oh, this guy's going to be a Hall of Famer when all is said and done. You got Pete Rose, who is, you know, chasing the hit record. Fisk, who would play all the way into the 90s. Goose Gossage played a while. Tommy Lasorda, who would manage all the way into the 90s. There's another Yaz. Tony Perez, a young shortstop by the name of Ozzy Smith. Here's your tops, your 81 tops. Or 80, yeah, 81 tops, excuse me. Carew, Ozzy Smith, Mike Schmidt, Don Sutton. Like I said, you see these cards, I guess nobody expects them to be Hall of Famers off from the from the get-go. And even if they are super hype prospects, you never know. There's plenty of been plenty of super hype prospects that 
didn't put together Hall of Fame careers when everybody said, thought they might be superstars in the league. Okay, 82. Here we got the Diamond Kings from 82 Donruss. Peru Winfield Smith. Then you got the 82 Donruss design, which is much better than the 81 Donruss design. Love the ball on the bat. I mean, it seems so simple. <laughs> I mean, these graphics are very elementary. Um, look like clip art down here at the bottom. Uh, we got, you know, Seaver, Rose, Carew, Perez, Negro, Robin Yunt. That's my earliest Robin Yunt card. You got more Don Russ, and then you got 82 Fleer, uh, Sutton, Trammell, Baines, Carew. And then we move on into the Kmart set, which uh, featured all the cards of MVPs. And it's called the Kmart MVP series. So you see reprints, Mantle, Koufax, Robinson. So I have every Hall of Famer out of that set. I won't focus on each of these, but this is the whole Kmart set uh, that has Hall of Famers in it. And then you got these um, highlights down here, Drysdale, Hank Aaron, Pete Rose. Here you got uh, Carlton Fisk in action, Carew and Forsh, and Don Sutton. And then you move into 82 Tops. The hockey stick design. This is one of the reasons I loved 2019 uh, Tops. You know, you can see why it was near the top of my list in the flagship designs of the decade. If you haven't seen that video, you can check it out. It's on my channel. Uh, but I loved how 2019 was a throwback to this 82 set. It wasn't the full, it wasn't the, you know, the hockey stick that stopped and it came in on the other side, but Really love this design of cards. It's another Ricky right here. Young Ricky. Alright, moving into 83. 1983. Don't have a whole lot of 83s. There's a blank page right there. Uh, we got Diamond Kings here. Raleigh Fingers. Got the uh, Ty Cobb puzzle card. If you watch my channel, you're very familiar with this image. Because this puzzle was sitting on my desk for a while. Uh, the Hall of Fame series. Hall of Fame Heroes. Roberto Clemente. There's an Opeachy of Bobby Cox, uh, Phil Negro, Super Veteran Cards. Here's a Dale Murphy, Phil Negro, Seaver. 83 is a very, very nice set. A lot of people, this is their one of their favorite sets from the 80s, Joe Morgan. And then we move into 84. Um, there's another 83 right there. Moving to 84, you can see the Fleer design or Bruce Suter there. There's an Opeachy, Bobby Cox, and uh, then you got your 84 tops, Sutton, Reggie, Ozzy Smith. Another set that looks very familiar if you collected 2019 uh, cards this year because this design was featured on an insert set uh, throughout Topps flagship this year. As well as the uh, Silver Packs, weren't the Silver Packs also this 84 design? All right, now we're here with 85, 85 Fleer, Nolan Ryan, Don Sutton. Here's a Don Sutton. So this one, he's on the Brewers. This one, he's on the uh, the A's. Don Sutton played for a plethora of teams. Uh, this is the Fleer update, and that's the regular Fleer. Uh, here you got the Leaf, Ozzy Smith. Love this card. Just a beautiful card. Love how the, the red stripes here go with the Cardinals uniform. Um... Another Opeachy Bobby Cox. Uh, then you have your regular 85 tops here. Gary Carter. Rod Carew. You got this young pitcher that came onto the scene. Lee Smith. Who's a reliever. And Tom Seaver still doing his thing. The Ozzy Smith All-Star. And another Don Sutton in a Brewers uniform. Alright, we move on to 1986. That's a Big League Chew card. Remember Big League Chew? That came from Big League Chew. You got uh, your Don Russ. I really don't like 86 Don Russ design. Uh, it's probably one of my least liked uh, Don Russ designs. Uh, you know, after 90, 88, it's pretty bad too. Yeah, 86, I didn't like the design. I mean, it has a great rookie class in Don Russ, which I don't have any of those cards, but just I, I didn't like that, that design. Uh, here's Fleer, 86 Fleer. There's a Fleer Mini of Don Sutton. Here's a leaf card of Phil Negro, Joe Negro. 
and then you got your your 86 tops a lot of people like this set um, Don Sutton Tom Seaver and then you have your turn back the clock cards there's another Bobby Cox and another Tom Seaver this Tom Seaver is the from the traded set tops traded so white socks red socks chain socks all right moving into 87 87 Greg Maddox rookie card so there you go moving again through history of baseball there's a young Cubs pitcher uh, who went on to become one of the greatest pitchers of all time in my opinion and yes I am biased uh, there's a Tim Raines, Burt Blylevin, Yunt Trammell, Jackson, Ricky Henderson. Uh, here's Fleer down here. These Fleer updates, yeah, both of these are Fleer update cards right here. Dennis Eckersley and Reggie Jackson. Here's the award winner set from Fleer uh, with Tony Gwynn. Kirby Puckett, another young player that burst onto the scene. Mike Schmidt, Ozzie Smith. He's now a uh, well-known veteran. This one is, I think it's called Sluggers and Pitchers. Yeah, it says Sluggers down here. Uh, it says Baseball is Best at the Top, and you got Sluggers and Pitchers. And then here you got the iconic 87 set, um, 87 tops. A lot of people very fond of this set because of where it fell into their collecting. A lot of people, this was, especially people my age, this was like their first set. It wasn't my first set because I didn't get into collecting until... Uh, 1991 so i had a very short stint in collecting baseball cards as a kid uh but it was enough to ignite a passion in me later on in life more 87 tops here's one of the glossy all-stars and another glossy all-star uh this is a send-in i think that these are only mailed out by tops um they're glossy cards as well like the like the all-star cards but the iconic 87 set still missing a few hall of famers in that set all right move on to 88 88 don russ a lot of people really dislike this set because of the design i do as well i don't really care much for the 88 design as well so still need plenty of hall of famers at 88 i might pick up a box of 88 try to fill out my hall of famer collection from 88 one of my least favorite sets of all time 88 Fleer. I really hate this design. Um, but I got Edgar Martinez rookie in here. Ozzie Smith. Uh, Don Sutton. There's a Tom Glavin rookie card. Uh, John Smoltz uh, from Update. Yeah, Fleer Update. John Smoltz. Really his first... Tr it's not considered a true rookie. They call it an extended rookie or something like that. But this was... Even though his rookie is mostly an 89 product... He did have a card in 88 with a Fleer update. Then we got some score here. Necro Sutton, Lee Smith. Then we got Tops with a... Uh, here's your 88 Tops design. Uh, here's your All-Stars from Tops. Some more Tops here. Here's your glossy All-Star inserts from Tops. And then I got the Rite Aid set. Uh, team MVPs, lots of Hall of Famers featured in there. Some more Rite Aid cards. Wade Boggs, Cal Ripken, Jack Morris down here. Tommy Lasorda, that's a Tiffany. It's a top tif top Tiffany. You can see the back is very bright. All right, and closing out the uh, decade of the 80s, and also closing out this binder is 1989. So I have a lot of 89 Don Russ. Uh, you may have seen me. Well, I say a lot, but I'm still not done collecting all the Hall of Famers from 89 Don Russ. Still missing that Griffey rookie. Um, but I opened up a box of this and got a Biggio rookie out of it. Uh, let's see. Tony Gwynn, Wade Boggs, Paul Molitor, Warren Spawn puzzle, which you see back here up under the binder. Um, Smoltz rookie. Here's your MVPs from Don Russ. Another Biggio rookie that's 89 Fleer. Smith, another Smoltz rookie. Uh, 89 for the record insert. Greg Maddox. I think that was an insert set. Here you got score down here with Wade Boggs. It's my only 89 score. 89 tops. Eh, probably not one of my favorite sets, but 
Bruce Sutter, Tony LaRusso, and now you got to remember for the fact you are right smack dab in the peak of Junk Wax in 89. I consider Junk Wax starting 86, 86, 87. I think that's when they really ramped up production on cards. Uh, when the hobby got started getting real big, 86, 87. 88, it got worse. 89, it got worse. 90, it got worse. 91, it got worse. 92, you started seeing changes in the hobby. Um, you, you now had upper deck in the game after 89. But the, the writing was on the wall. They were still overproducing in 92. But collecting was starting to, I think, sink down a little bit in uh, 90, 92. I think that's when the collecting started to sink down because... A lot of these younger collectors were now entering high school and weren't really collecting as much. So continuing with 89, um, here's your All-Stars, uh, Tony Gwynn, this one's courtesy of JJZ, that's a Wade Boggs autograph card uh, on 89 tops. Gary Carter, Ozzy Smith, and on the very last page, mentioned Upper Deck. I need to pick up a box 89 Upper Deck, I really want to rip some some 89 upper deck because i don't have a lot of cards from it as you can see from my lone ozzy smith here from 89 upper deck so i hope you all appreciated that um just in case you're wondering i love these these type of binders are like the d-ring they got the straight side and the curved side and they only got the one little tab down here at the bottom you know very easy to open just just pull on this tab down here and it opens up awesome little binder there uh, great design. I think I got this at Walgreens when it was on sale. I think it was buy one get one free at Walgreens. So I actually got two of these binders. Should have bought more at the time, but I didn't need any more binders at that time. So hope you all enjoyed my early early binder. I say the early binder, but that one is complete. Uh, check me out tomorrow for part two of the series. We'll get into the 90s. Uh, yes, uh, the beginning of my heyday in collecting. I, like, I only collected for like two or three years as a kid before I quit. So I started in 91. 93 was probably the last year I collected. Uh, I remember buying cards in 94. Um, but towards the end of 94, when I in entered high school, baseball cards weren't for me then. <laughs> So, hope y'all appreciate it. Appreciate y'all watching. Uh, if y'all want to get into my next uh, pack mixer break, it will be in the description below. So, this is a card, obvious. Remember, you can only control your thoughts and your actions. So, stay positive. Keep ripping them packs. And I'll catch y'all later. Peace.